Good day class, welcome to another lecture in soil mechanics. So we are on already in the third chapter, which is soil classification. So in this chapter, we'll discuss about the grain size classification in the Bureau of Soils, the classification by triangular chart or the USDA, the AASH to soil classification system, unified soil classification system, and and MIT soil classification system. So, when we say texture, it refers to the um, surface appearance of the soil. So, um, it it tells about the different particle sizes which are present in the soil. So, we have four bases of particle size. So, generally, we have the gravel, sand, silt, and clay. And as for the classification systems, there are a lot of classification systems used, but for engineering purposes, we will be discussing about two textural classifications, which is the USDA and the MIT and another two for the engineering behavior which is the AASHTO and USCS. So first let us discuss the US Department of Agriculture or USDA soil classification system. So this is based on particle size limits and the soils are named after their principal components. So, according to this classification, the sand, the sand is the soil with particle sizes ranging from 2 to 0 0.5 mm, while for silt, this, these are the soils with particle size ranging from 0 0.5 to 0 0.002 mm, and for clay, these are soils with particle size less than 0 0.002 mm and anything larger than 2 mm is classified as gravel. So, in this type of soil classification, the percentages of gravel, sand, silt, and clay are um, determined and after that, we will we use this triangular chart. So, notice that each side has its um, different um, basis. So, we have the sand, silt, and clay. So, the percentages of each um, soil is plotted in this chart and Notice that we don't have any side for gravel. So, if we have a percentage of gravel, we have to modify the percentages of clay, silt, and sand. So, for better understanding, let's have an example problem. So, we are asked to classify the soil according to USDA soil classification system if the percentages of sand, silt, and clay are 18, 24, and 58 respectively. So we don't have to modify these percentages since we do not have any um, percentage of gravel. So for the first percentage of sand, we, which is 18%, so we will simply put a line from this eight, 18 to the other um, side. To, so, use these arrows, arrows for your references. So, you will move clockwise in this. So, the sand is directed into this direction. For the silt is downwards. And clay is these horizontal lines. So, again, the sand is 18%. And then, next is the silt which is 24 percent so approximately it is here 24 percent 
And lastly, 40% of clay, which is 58%. So, this one. And notice that the three lines will intersect and the area in which it will intersect is the soil classification. So, based on the percentages of sand, silt, and clay, our soil is classified as clay in the USDA soil classification system. So, let's have another example problem. So, in this problem, we are again asked to classify the soil using USDA. But, we have a percentage of gravel. So, the percentages of gravel, sand, silt, and clay are 12, 22, 26, and 40% respectively. So, what we are going to do is, first, we have to modify the percentages of um, sand, silt, and clay. So, how are we going to modify that? So, this is simply modified percentages. So, we are always going to modify the percentages if we have gravel. So, for the sand, this is equal to the percent of sand, which is 22%, all over 100% minus the percent of gravel, which is 12%. Then, times 100, since we are dealing with percentages here, you will get that the percentage of sand... is equal to 25%. While for the silt, we have 26%. All over 100% minus the percentage of gravel, which is again 12% times 100%. So, this is 29.5454%. And lastly, for the modified percentage of clay, we have 40% all over 100 minus 12%. So, this is uh, times 100. So, this is equal to 45.4545%. So, summing this up, we will get 100%. So, 99.9999, um, which is also um, equal to 100%. So, now that we have the modified percentages, first let us plot the percent of sand which is 25 percent so this this line this red line so this is our percentage of sand and next is the percentage of silt which is 29.5454 percent this is very close to the 30% line. And then, for the percentage of clay, we have 45.45%. So, approximately in between 40 and 50. So, the three lines met at the clay area. So, but, the remember that we have the uh, percentage of gravel. So, we would classify this soil as gravelly clay. So, 
So always remember if you have a um a percentage of gravel you have to add the word gravelly before the um the soil classification. So if ever our result um our res um if ever we are um, classifying another soil sample and we ended up with sandy clay loam and it has a gravel percentage so you will use gravelly sandy clay loam so that is it so next is another soil classification for the engineering behavior of soils so, this is the AASHTO or American Association of State Highways and Transportation Officials Site Classification System. So, again, in this soil classification, we, um, we, we consider the particle size of the soil as well as its plasticity so notice that you will need the passing percentages for the number 10 number 40 number 200 sieves and as well as the characteristics of the fraction of soil passing the number 40 sieve which is Specifically, the liquid limit and the plasticity index. So, in this type of cell classification, we will be using two tables. So, the first table is for when there is 35% or less of the total soil sample passing the number 200 sieve. And for the second one, so this is used when there is more than 35% of the total soil sample passing the number 200 sieve. So you always have to check first the percentage passing the number 200 sieve. So, and compare it to 35%. So in this table, we we will move from um, from up downward and then left to right. So we will check within this in we will check whether we will our soil will um pass in this given criteria of the sieve analysis and the liquid limit and plasticity index. So there are certain notes to consider when classifying the soil under the AASHTO classification system. So first, soils Classified under groups A1, A2, and A3 are granular materials of which 35% or less of the particles passes through the number 1 sieve. So this is the case where you will use the first table. And the second one, when more than 35% of the total soil sample passes through the number 200 sieve, so you will use the second table. And you will classify the soils under A4, A5, A6, or A7. And these soils are mostly clay-type materials. So again, the ash to soil classification is based on the grain size. And then, second is the plasticity. So, if the plasticity index is 10 or less, we use the word or prefix silty and if the um, plasticity index is greater than 10 we use the um, 
word play. And also, if cobbles and boulders are encountered, they are excluded from the portion of the soil sample from which classification is made. However, their percentage is recorded. So, according to this classification, um, the gravel fraction is the fraction passing the 75 mm sieve and is retained on the number 10 sieve. So, greater than the 75 mm sieve is considered as cobbles and boulders. And the sun fraction is the fraction passing the number 10 sieve and is retained on the number 200 sieve. And anything finer than the number 200 sieve is considered as silt and clay. So, another um, another important thing in using the Ashto soil classification is the group index. So, the group index is calculated using the F200 or the percentage passing through the number 200 sieve, the liquid limit, and the plasticity index. So, depending on the group we have determined, we have to calculate the group index. But, the calculation of group index has... Um, has also some um, notes. Um, the first term, which is F200 minus 35 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.005 times the liquid limit minus 40, is the partial group index for liquid limit. While for the remaining term, which is 0 0.01 times F200 minus 15 times PI minus 10 is the partial group index for the plasticity index. And if the calculated value of the group index is negative, it is taken as zero. So there is no negative group index. So, I mean, you can calculate or you can arrive with a negative value of the group index but if that is the case you have to write it as zero so second the group index calculated is rounded off to the nearest whole number and third if there is no upper limit for the group index uh, I mean there is no upper limit for the group index So, for the group index of soils belonging to A1-A, A1-B, A2-4, A2-5, and A3, the group index is always 0. So, you don't have to calculate that. Just automatically, if you classify the soil under these groups, just write the group index as zero. So, if ever your soils are under A to dash 6 and A to dash 7, just use the partial group index for plasticity index or simply this term. So, in order to have a better understanding of the um, Ashta soil classification system, let's have example problem number three. So, we are given the results of the particle size analysis of the soil, in which the percentage passing the number 10 sieve is 42%, the percentage passing the number 10 sieve is 35%, and the percentage passing the number 200 sieve is 20%. So, the liquid limit and the plastic limit of the minus number 40 fraction of the soil are 25 and 20 respectively. 
So, classify the soil by the uh, A-2 soil classification system. So, we are we know these values, number 10, number 40, and number 200. So, we are okay with that. And we also know the liquid limit, which is 40. However, we do not have the plasticity index, but we can calculate that by using. So, the plasticity index is equal to the liquid limit minus the plastic limit which is given so this is equal to 25 minus 20 so this our plasticity index is 5 so since less than 35 percent of the soil pass the of the total soil sample past the number 200 sieve, we will be using this table. So, 25, uh, 20% is less than 35. So, is this table. So, let us check. So, for the number 10 sieve, 50 max, 42. So, this is okay. And then, for the number 40 sieve, we have 35%. So, 35. So, we are above the maximum. So, move, we'll move to the next column. So, there is no criteria for the number 10 sieve. So, we are okay with this. And then, 35% passing the number 40 sieve. So, we are okay. So, 35 is less than the... 50 maximum and then for the number 200 sieve the percent passing is 20 so again this is okay 25 maximum and there is no requirement for the liquid limit and plasticity index 6 maximum which but our plasticity index is equal to 5 so again we are okay with this so under this um, under the ash to soil classification system, this soil sample is classified as A-1-B and our group index is equal to 0. So this is our um, soil. The soil is classified as A-1-B the group index equal to 0. And for another example problem, um, 95% of the soil passes through the number 200 sieve and has a liquid limit of 60 and a plasticity index of 40. So, classify the soil by the AASH the system. So, there is no requirement for the number 10 and 40 sieves. And then, for the number 200 sieve, so 36 minimum, okay. This is just the minimum. And 95 is a lot greater than... 36 so we're okay with this next is we have to check the liquid limit which is 60 so our liquid limit is greater than the maximum we will move to the next column 36 okay and then a minimum of 41 for the liquid limit so we have 60 okay and then next is the plasticity index so, we have a plasticity index, so it does not meet the criteria for A5 soils. We'll move to the next column. So, 36. 95 is greater than 36, but our liquid limit is above the maximum. So, we'll move to the next column. So, 
36. And then, liquid limit is 60 above minimum, okay? And for the plasticity index, we have 11 as the minimum. So, this is, okay, 40. So, our soil can be A-7. But, notice this notes A and B. So, for A-7-5, the plasticity index is less than or equal to LL minus 30. And for A7-6, um, the plasticity index is greater than the liquid limit minus 30. So let us check PI is equal to 40. And then LL, LL minus 30, uh, I mean, LL minus 30 is equal to 30. And so this is less than 30. So we have the A7-5 um, So A7-5 So we have to Compute the group index. So, group index is equal to um, the percent passing the number 200. So, we have 95 minus 35 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.005 times um, 40 so 60 minus 40 plus plus 0 0.01 times 95 minus 15 times plasticity index which is 40 minus 10 so the partial GI for the um, liquid limit is equal to 18 and the partial group index for the liquid um, for the plasticity index was 42 I, I mean 24 So, our group index GI is equal to 42. So, the group in uh, the group is the group classification rather is A7-5 and group index is 42. So, let's move to the next um, classification system. So, the unified soil classification system is another um, classification system for the engineering behavior of soils. So, the USCS is under the um, ASTM D2487. So that is the um, ASTM designation of the USCS. And 
the, in this classification, we consider the particle sizes and as well as the plasticity of the soils. So specifically, the data needed are the first is the percentage of gravel. So this is the fraction passing the 76.2 mm sieve and retained on the number 4 or 4.75 4 mm sieve opening. The next is the percentage of sand, which is the fraction passing the number 4 sieve and then retained on the number 200 sieve. And lastly is the percentage of silts and clay, which is the fraction passing the number 200 sieve. So another data. So sometimes we also need the um, uniformity coefficient CU and the coefficient of gradation CC. And lastly for the plasticity, we need the liquid limit and the Plasticity index of the soil. So, always remember that for the given soil, the fine fraction is the um, silts and clay, which is the percent passing the number 200 sieve. So, the coarse fraction is the percentage retained on the number 200 sieve. So, that's composed of the gravel and sand. And for the gravel, fraction that is the percent retained on the number for sieve so and then for the sand fraction that is the percentage retained on the number 200 sieve minus the percentage retained on the number for sieve So, we use several um, symbols in the unified soil classification system. So, we write W, I um, mean W, if the soil is well graded, P for poorly graded, L for low plasticity. So, it has low plasticity when the liquid limit is less than 50 and High plasticity if the liquid limit is more than 50. So, the coarse grain soils are gravelly and sandy in nature. So, and less than 50% pa passing the number 200 sieve. So, in this soil, um, coarse grain soils um, usually starts with the uh, prefix G or S. So, G stands for gravelly and S for sandy. Well, on the other hand, if 50% or more passes the number 200 sieve, the soil is fine grained. So, usually, the group symbols will start with the prefix M, which is inorganic silt, C for inorganic clay, O for organic silts and clays, and PT for pit muck and other highly organic soils so in in using the unified soil classification system you are always required to find the group symbol and the group name of the soil so we have the criteria for assigning group symbols so we will use this table um so check first if the percentage retained on the number 200 sieve is more than 50 percent and if it is um if 50 percent or more passes the number 200 sieve so it is fine grained and take note of the um the notes you have to check the percentages of gravels and sands, um, um, compute the uniformity coefficient as well as the coefficient of gradation and compare the plasticity index. So, 
whenever applicable. And when using this table, you will always move from left to right until you arrive with the um, group symbol. So, another useful material is the um, plasticity chart. So, you will plot the plasticity index on the y-axis and the liquid limit on the x-axis. And, in assigning group names, the ASTM created an elaborate system to design uh, to assign group names to soils. So, we use this table. So, since we have already determined the group symbol, again, you have to move from left to right to determine the group name. And you have to um, compare the percentage of sand for coarse grain soils. And you have to and as well as the gravel for depending on the group symbol so in this groups you have to compare it with the sand percentage of sand and then you have to compare the percentage of gravel for these group symbols and then for defined green soils so we will use this um flow chart and yes another flow chart when the liquid limit is greater than or equal to 50 so th this one is for when the liquid limit is less than 50 and this one is when the liquid limit is greater than or equal to 50 And for OL, OH, let's have an example problem. So, we are asked to classify the soil according to the USCS if the passing percentages are as follows. So, the percent that passes the number 10 sieve is 100%. The number 40 sieve is 80% and the number 200 sieve is 58%. So, the liquid limit and the plasticity index of the minus 40 fraction of the soil are 30 and 10 respectively. So, first let us identify the group symbol of the soil. So, since, since the percent passing, the number 200 sieve is 58%, we have the, um, we will use the fine grade soils. Because 58 is greater than 50, we have fine grained. So, we have the fine grained soils. And then, let's determine if we will, this will fall under the silts and clays or the silt on the other one. So, our liquid limit is 30. So, this is less than. And our soil is organic. And then, let's check the plasticity index. So, the plasticity index is equal to 10, which is greater than 7. And let's check if it plots above the A line. So, this to determine this, you have to use the plasticity chart. So, again, our liquid limit is 30. So, 30. And then, our plasticity index is 10. So, this will meet. Uh, okay. So, it plots above the A line. So, we will proceed with this one. And, 
And therefore, our group symbol is CL. Oh, by the way, we have a note here, E. If P is, um, if the plasticity index is less than or equal to 4 and is, uh, I mean, greater than or equal to 4 and is less than or equal to 7 and plus on the hatch area in the, in the plasticity chart, we use the dual symbol CLML. But our plasticity index is greater than 7, so we can disregard this note. So our group symbol is CL. Now that we have the um, group symbol, let's determine the group name. So from the char uh, flow chart provided by the um, ASTM, we have CL. So let's compare. Our percentage passing the number 200 sieve is greater than 200. So just this one. And then how about our percentage of gravel? So our percentage of gravel is zero. So, our percentage of gravel, okay, uh, sorry, we have to, um, we have to compare the percentage of sand to the percentage of gravel. So, our percentage of sand is equal to um, 100 minus 58. So, this is equal to 42. Again, the percentage of sand is the percentage retained on the number 200 C minus the percentage passing the number for sieve. So that is 42. Forty-two percent, and then for the percentage of gravel, this is equal to zero. And then the percentage of sand is greater than the percentage of gravel and our percentage of gravel is less than 15 percent and therefore our soil is classified as sandiline clay and then another example problem the percentage passing the number 4 sieve is 70% and the percentage passing the number 200 sieve is 30%. So the liquid limit is 30 and the plastic limit is equal to 12. So let's compute the plasticity index. PI is equal to LL minus PL 33 minus 12 so this is equal to 21 I think this is the percentage passing the number 40 sieve
or four, four rather. So, again, the plastic limit is equal to 12. And then, the plasticity index, index is 21. So, notice that the percentage passing the number 200 sieve is less than um, 50%. So, more than 50% of our soil is retained on the number 200 sieve. So, choose this. And then, let's check if it, if it is sands or if it is gravels or sands. So, our percent passing the <laughs> number 4 is 70. So, 50, it is greater than 50% so sand and then let's determine whether it is clean sands or sands with fines so our percentage of fines is 30% because the um, percentage passing the number 200 are the fines and we have as 30 so, more than 12% fines. Sands with fines. And then, we have the note B and D. So, let's check. Sands with 5 to 12% fines are required to use dual symbols. But, our percentage is 30. So, this is not applicable. And, next is letter D. If the plasticity index is between 4 and 7 and plots on the hatch area, we use the dual symbol GC and GI. So, our plasticity index is greater than 7 because it is 21. And let's check if it plots above the, um, um, if it plots in the hatched area. So, our plasticity index is 21. And then, our liquid limit is, I mean, 12. The plasticity. Okay, the plasticity index is 21. So, what I have plot here is the um, plastic limit. So, let's erase this one. So, our plasticity index is... 33 minus 12 or 21. And our um, liquid limit is equal to 33. So, it is not in the hatched area. So, this one here is not applicable. So, now that we have determined that the soil sample are sensed with fines, we will have now, we determine now if it is either SM or SC. So, the plastic plasticity index is greater than 7 because this is 21 and it plots above the A line. So, this is the plot of our plasticity index. So, our soil is has a group symbol SC.
And next, now that we have determined the group symbol, let's determine the group name. So, S, C. We are here. And our percentage of gravel... is percentage of gravel. So, this is retained on the number 4 sieve. And 100 minus the percent passing the number 4 sieve is 70. So, the percentage of the gravel is um... 30%. <clears throat> so that is greater than fifteen percent and we have the group name clay is sand with gravel. So Again, for the recap, in using the Unified Soil Classification System, always first determine the um, group symbol and then when the group symbol is known, identify the group name. So, the last soil classification system is the MIT or Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So, this is the second textural soil classification. So, because when we say textural classification, we only consider the particle sizes and not the um, behavior or specifically the plasticity of the soil. So, under this classification, the gravel or the soil with partical size greater than the two greater than two mm, and then the soil with particle size ranging from two to zero point six mm is um classified as sand, and the soil with particle size ranging from zero point six to zero point zero two mm is classified as silt. And then, anything less than 0 0.002 mm is classified as clay. So, in this um, type of classification system, we only determine the percentages of gravel, sand, silt, and clay. So, let's have our last example problem in this lecture. So, we are asked to determine the um, percentage of the gravel, sand, silt, and clay. So, normally, you will have to plot this in the um, grain size distribution. Um, but to Simplify my lecture, I will um, teach you a simple calculator technique. So, you are required to set your calculator in stack mode. So, mode 3 dash 4. Or the ln x because our gain size distribution plot is semi logarithmic so use this one and then we have to determine the percent passing the 2 mm 
and the 0 0.06 mm and then the 0 0.002 mm so this is the size so this will be your um x values and then next is the percent passing this will be your y values so this is very similar in um in um, calculating the d60, d10, d30, d75, and d25 of the soil. So, now that you have put your calculator in mode 3 4, it will ask you to input some x and y values. So, first, let us determine the percent passing the 2 mm seal since our largest size is 0 0.425 mm and the percent finer or percent passing is 100 percent automatically the percent passing the 2 mm sieve is 100 so no need to calculate that and next is to determine the particles um, the percentage um, finer than finer than 0 0.06 mm. So mode mode three four. So you will arrive <laughs> with this um, set up in your calculator. So. You have to input um, 0 0.425 for the first x value and 0 0.0330 for the um, next x value and then input 190 so you will get um, and press AC and then shift stat shift stat and then press 5 regression And then, 0 0.06 y hat. And you will arrive with 92.3393%. And for the 0 0.02 mm, just simply input these values in the x and y. And you will arrive with 41.58. 44% and subtracting this so this is the percentage of gravel 0% and then this is the percentage of um, sand and then subtract this again you will get the percentage of silt so 90, 100 minus 92 0.33 so we will have 7.66 percent and then um, 92 minus 33 point uh, 92 minus 41 you will get 50.75 percent and the percentage of clay is of course 41.58 percent So, that's it. And 
MIT just simply calculate the percentages of the four um, four sizes, the gravels and silt and clay. So again, thank you for watching. And you can also use these references to further your knowledge about the subjects. And thank you for watching. And you can also subscribe to my channel for notifications. And again, thank you.